Hi, so my name is Jeanette Hofstie. I am working at the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute in Rachel Collins' lab. And my project is working with the SEM. I'm working with the Calatreid larvae. And I'm looking at different developmental modes if the nurse egg or direct developers um, have lost any of their ancestral feeding structures. So I'm using the SEM to look at any morphological changes um, from species to species. Today I'm going to show you how to prepare larvae for SEM. So the um, larval prep preparation can be split up into three different main steps. There's relaxation, fixation, and drying of the specimen. Um, so right now we have the larvae already encapsulated and they're in a little petri dish. Uh, we're going to use chlorotone and magnesium chloride, 7.5%, and we're just going to put a drop to three drops of both chlorotone and magnesium chloride into the filtered seawater that the larvae are in. And depending on the size and sensitivity of the villagers, we're going to do this for maybe one to three hours. And once they stop retracting the muscles, then we know that they're relaxed and we can move on to fixation. After your larvae are relaxed, you can start the fixation process. So I put the larvae in a vial and I'm going to add a couple drops of 5% glutaraldehyde to the vial. And the amount of drops varies depending on the size of your larvae. So I'm going to add just about three or four drops for our, our villagers and in about five minutes they should all settle to the bottom and that's how you know you can proceed. Larvae are fixed in glutaraldehyde. We do four to five rinses with filtered seawater and this is to remove the glutaraldehyde and also to remove any debris from the villagers, specifically any debris on the cilia. Now we move on to fixation in osmium tetroxide. We add sodium bicarbonate to the osmium te tetroxide, the one to one ratio, and we end up with 2% osmium. Um, we take out as much of the water as possible in the vial of the villagers and add about 1 to 1.5 milliliters of the osmium tetroxide. So we let the osmium fix in the fridge for one to three hours. It allows the osmium to permeate the cell membranes and creates a electrically conductive surface for the electron microscope. After fixing an osmium for about three hours, we do three to four washes of distilled seawater to get rid of all the osmium and then we can move on to drying. So we now move on to drying the specimen. Um, we start drying with ethanol. So we start with 15% and end up in 100% ethanol. And we um, leave the larvae in each for about 15 minutes. And we end up doing um, three changes with the 100% just to make sure that there's no water left in the vial. For the first change in 15% ethanol, you actually want a little bit of water still left in the vial just because putting ethanol in with the villager is um, kind of volatile. So if you have delicate cilia, then you just want to be careful and have a little bit of water in there to start. After three rounds of 100% ethanol, we move on to the critical point dryer. 
The critical point dryer works by replacing the water in the cells with CO2, and it works by using high pressure and high temperature, and that helps avoid the development of a liquid gas interface, which helps um, maintain the structural integrity of the specimens when they're in the high vac vacuum chamber of the um, scanning electron microscope. So after critical point drying, we mount the stub. Um, this is what the, the stub looks like after we mount, and then um, we will gold coat the specimen, and that helps um, to stop any supercharging of the electrons and also uh, will increase the surface resolution on that scan. This is the gold coater that we use after focal point drying and mounting the stub. It um, just adds another conductive element to give the specimen gold a higher resolution. After we coat the specimen, then we put them in the FEM. This is the chamber. It's um, a high vacuum chamber. So the specimens go in here, and then we're able to use the computer and some FEM software to view the images. So we're in um, South Carolina at Sigby and I finished all of my research in Panama, here's my results, and I found that all of the uh, modes of development that I looked at had a um, prototroch, metatroch, and food group except for the uh, Ustalatalina.